Hello and welcome to Introduction to Programming and Database class. Today we're going to be exploring flowcharts and pseudocode. This is your instructor Saad Yusuf. The problem that we're going to be solving today is drawing a flowchart and writing a pseudocode to display your first name and last name on screen. In the last tutorial I shared with you we looked at different flowcharting symbols. So now we're going to be using those flowcharting symbols to solve the business problem. As you've learned in the last tutorial that we have some terminal symbols that are used for start and stop. Every time you start a flowchart you have to use a terminal symbol to start and every time you're done with your business logic you put the terminal symbol for stopping a flowchart. In between the start and the stop lies your logic. The logic could either be driven with the help of an input symbol, output symbol, or a process symbol. Input symbols and output symbols are exactly the same. They're parallelograms. But the process symbol is a rectangular symbol. So since the problem statement says display your first name and last name, so it's only referring to an output. Therefore, we're only going to be using the parallelogram symbol other than the terminal symbol and then in pseudocoding you also use a flow line symbol to connect all the boxes together so this will going to be our layout so let's go to the second slide now I'm using Microsoft PowerPoint here and in Microsoft PowerPoint you can insert the symbols through an insert tab and they are located under shapes and here are my flowchart symbols this is the symbol for process this is the terminal symbol and then I have this parallelogram for input and output. So I'm going to be using these symbols. So let's first get started with my terminal symbol. This is the start of the process. I'm uppercasing it this as a writing convention. Then I will going to now insert the next shape, which will going to be my parallelogram shape because I want to display the first name and the last name. Now if I want my first name and last name to be on two separate lines of output because that's how I want my programmer to understand and that's how I want my pseudocode writer to understand I will going to use two sets of parallelogram symbols one for first name and one for last name. Now in Microsoft PowerPoint and also available from well, Word 2013 the shortcut is now available across the board. If you want to copy and paste something and it's a duplicate there is a new shortcut shortcut key that you can use it is called control D D as in David so if I do control D that duplicates this so I'm gonna bring this down exactly right over here so I have I'm just moving my symbols a little bit closer away from this and now I'm gonna duplicate this one which is for my stop so here's my logic and in my logic I have a start and a stop and I have two parallelogram, one for each one of the displays. And what I want to display here is my first name and my last name. So I'm simply going to write my first name here and my last name here. But just by merely writing my first name and last name, the programmer will not going to understand what do I want to do with my first name and last name. If I want my first name and last name to be displayed on the screen, in programming any text that needs to go literally on the screen as it is we enclose that text in double quotes and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with this apart from that how will you think about if you were to go to a website and you had to log into the website and you see two sets of text boxes with no labels to the left how will you know which box is for the username and which box will be for the password what does that mean is that whenever you go out for input or output you need to have some information to the left to tell you what this input or output is all about. So I want my user to understand that this is my first name and this is my last name because that's what the business problem wants me to do. So it's always a great idea to attach some kind of a label. So I'm attaching my label. Now label is also a literal text must be going on the screen as it is therefore I'm making this change now if you notice this basically went in two lines which is okay but just for readability purpose I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit more just to fit now the other thing is 
since I use the same set of box for input as well as output, how will the developer know if I need to input or I need to output? Therefore, what we do in uh, flowcharting is that we always precede the statement with an action verb, which tells the reader of the flowchart what the flowchart is supposed to do at this particular step. So what am I supposed to do here? I'm supposed to display. So therefore, I will going to throw this word display. And I'm uppercasing it because it's an action word. Now, once again, I will going to stretch each one of the boxes so that they are the right size and I can fit my content exactly in them. So these are my shapes that I'm using. I'm going to push around my start button and my stop button to align. And then one last thing that is still needed to be done is the arrows, which I can grab right on the home. Now these shapes are also available from home and they're also available under insert shape so you could do it from either of the two places so i'm going to grab this arrow i'm going to draw this arrow now before i duplicate the arrow let me make some changes to the properties of arrow and that is i'm going to go to the format tab and let me make this a little bit thicker than what it is right now let me make it a little bit thicker and then i can duplicated so one duplication will come here and the next duplication will come here so see it all is all aligned so now here by looking at this flow chart I could tell that here's the start of the process this will going to first display the first name and the first name last name and then the last name so this is a flow chart logic for displaying the first name and the last name in the next tutorial I will going to teach you how to convert this flow chart into its equal in pseudocode hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial see you in the next one thank you for watching